So we have today's webinar, which is all about MENA family business succession plan. And we have our exclusive speaker, Mr. Khalid al Kut, who is an executive coach, a speaker, an entrepreneur, a leadership expert, and a business consultant. His expertise range from many areas, such as leadership, corporate responsibility, public relation, public speaking, event management, motivational speaking, and voluntary services. He has, he has been working over for the past 15 years with different organizations, both private and government entities. So today, Mr. Khalid will be helping us to know more about the business uh, in the Middle East. So over to you, Mr. Khalid. Well, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be with the MENA speaker, the platform that, uh, you know, invite the, uh, speakers to build a change on the field which is their uh, expert their they are expert in so thank you once again and thanks to the mina speakers for the invitation it's given me a great pleasure to be with you here today and let's start talking about how we can build a successful um, uh, succession plan for the family office uh, but before we start before we even think of building a succession plan for the family office, let's talk a little bit about the challenges that is facing the family office. So the first thing I would like to talk about, what is the most common challenges that is facing the family office or the family businesses? You know, um, I won't talk about a lot of them because we have a lot of issues uh, or lots of challenges in a way, but let me just take a couple of those, which is, First of all, it's a family business. So there will be sometime some family problems, emotional problems, financial problems, or people who want more share on their, on their family uh, business, and many other things. But let's talk about that. If the problem is there, the unity is wampy toward the success of the generations taking over. The heat will start from that particular moment and then the transaction won't be smooth. There's another issue that it's facing the family office, which is informal culture and structure. You know, for many businesses, especially the, the family businesses, they just focus on the family members to lead positions. And that's where it should also think about how they can end of the day have that beautiful profit that can sustain the business at, in a way and also in the in another way build that beautiful change and sustain the growth of the upcoming generation in the family office so focus on focusing on hiring and uh, sorry focusing in appointing family businesses without the proper orientations uh, not making them getting ready for the office that's where the struggle comes uh, sometimes in the family of business pressure to to hire family members from uh, let's say none uh, let's say none of the family members who's in the management so there might be family members who is not acting on the family or they don't have a position on the family, but they keep pressurizing those family members who is having key positions to hire their uh, daughters or son or uh, cousins just to have them enroll in the family business. There is, this is one of the biggest mistakes when you just appoint the person because he is only a family member without giving him the skills, the knowledge, the business knowledge, and how he can lead toward the success of the legacy which was built by the first generation. Another thing that is happening from time to time as well is lack of training. I am very proud of one of the family businesses uh, model when, uh, when the graduates uh, or the candidate as a family member finishes university, they ask him to go for one full year to work outside the family office. That itself is a training for him. When he come to the, to the family, he have a one year orientation where he have to look into the whole process, how the, the 
group of company or the family office or the business itself is running. And after that, he will get a very uh, incentive training on the department, on the uh, positions that he will be taking. So it takes another year. So it's a three years of training just to prepare the person to take office. Now, there is also another thing, high turnover of non-family employees. Why does it happen? Because there was no succession plan for those employees where or where they're gonna be after a couple of years. If they are working hard, are they gonna be promoted? Are they gonna get more incentive? Will they climb the ladder of success as a career success? Because uh, the, the, the challenge that it's happening in family business that appointing family members only in key positions, they don't see that the, the future for them in that particular company is very visible. So what they do, they just have to find another job and they leave. And that's when the family offices uh, have a lot of uh, their employees just leaving for another uh, companies. The source of a growth is another challenge that it's facing the family businesses, which were, which uh, including financial uh, support, some of the family members because of an internal clashes, they don't want to invest in the growth of the, of the, uh, of the company. And that's where also a beautiful model of the family uh, advising council, the family advising council is, is a, is the console which will work on uh, clearing the issues in family office and make sure that those uh, conflicts doesn't affect the growth of the family business. Lack of an uh, external view, because uh, that's also lead to a lots of uh, growth issues in the organization because it won't give a very good resources and also data and also uh, information that is in need for the business developments and also that depend on uh, the internal information and the internal advisors without looking forward for um, a new arena of advisor. These are just the, some of the challenges that it's, uh, that it's facing. Uh, the family office, I will tackle only another three and then we're gonna move on to, to another, uh, let's say directions of the succession plan of the family office. Um, one of the things that, uh, that's really making a big, uh, let's say challenge to the, to the, to the generation who's running the, the business at, at uh, a particular year or a, or a generation is when there is no exit plan. Generations is different. Knowledge is different. The time that you use your, your protocol, it will be sufficient for its time, for its time but it's need to be improved. You know, such things makes the new generation a little bit frustrated because the, the, the orders or the books says that you have to follow what the legacy have been doing from the first generation to the second generations and you just have to do the same thing. Now, in business and especially in family businesses, the creativity that can come with the new generation can be an added value. But in the same time, if the third generation, uh, sorry, not the third, I want to specify the generation number, but if the new generation is not, uh, let's say, uh, been trained and uh, did not have a succession plan and did not uh, move on into knowing exactly how he, can, he or she can sustain the growth of the family office, they will come with a beautiful, uh, talented, uh, business uh, oriented uh, ideas, but end of the day, what's gonna happen on their implementation, they will fail because it's not only the innovation part, it's also the implementation part and how things can be implemented in the family office com uh, company. Now, what do the family office need to do or consider 
for them to have a very smooth, let's say, succession plan. Number one, plan for the business and plan for the family. Now, there is a beautiful connection. This, this, uh, uh, this business have started by the family. The first generation have worked day and night to make this legacy. Now, when generations comes, the second, the third, or the fourth, or whatever is the generation's number, if the focus is only in the, uh, on the business without you know, having the plan for the family, that's where the, the focus won't uh, meet the, uh, the, the real result, which is growing the, the family legacy and the business line and also pay back to the family what is their right. So the balance is in need in, in this. If you are planning to bring a new generation in, this generation plan to come in should be done years and years ago. You should also plan where they will gonna be. What is the right university for them to go? What is the right uh, uh, training should, should they should have? Where also they can go for their internship? Where the, uh, let's say the uh, rehearsal or, or the, let's say the in, uh, internal, um, internal experience that they can get and from who? Will you allow them to sit with the company advisors to tell them the in and out about the challenges? Will they be also uh, be informed about the major challenges that the family office have, uh, have faced? You are taking family members who is not in the business and you're preparing them. So what you have to do at this stage is to ensure that those those generations coming to the company is a family members, you, you will grow them to, to grow the business which was uh, started from the first generation. Uh, having said that, when you do this, do not have the focus in one direction, which is making the money out of the family office, but also how you can connect the whole family to know exactly what is happening on the business. So you ensure that they are aware and they are ready when the time is there for them to come into the office. Now, preparing the next generation is not an easy thing. And if anyone on the family office thinks that my son or my daughter will graduate and the position is ready for them, kindly note that this is not the way that will make you sustain that particular department growth if they just walk in. Ensure that the orientation is done in a right way. Ensure that the pre-training have been done in a, in a very smooth way. Ensure that they are ready with their proper skills, their leadership, their communications, their uh, business planning, and how they can also sustain and grow the business. Training is one of the key things that it's a need for the new generation before they sit on the chair of that position. So ensure that you take them also in an orientation that explore to them what is the business is all about and how they can also build with their innovation a beautiful growth, but by also consulting the advisory board of the uh, family office. And that's that can be for the first one year or two years with a very specific mon monitoring system and mentoring, mentoring them for, for a better growth as an individual and also as a position. Uh, one of the things that you need also to advise the, the new generations is the reporting line. Um, once they understand the proper reporting line, they will understand that it's not a single decisions when it comes to the family office, it's a collective decisions when it comes to, the, to, to big deals and also how they can close um, 
one uh, sorry how they can close uh, uh, what we call it how they can close the the deals um let's also talk about how you can hire from outside the family now it's very important to to know that if you will center all the positions and this is one of the things that we have done for one of the family offices which is we told them that your ceo should not be a family member and the reason why we have said this to this uh, particular family office is because you need somebody who will look into the things and give back to the board or the family members a very transparent not into the favor of any departments runs by the family office this is one second thing he is a strategical thinker for the growth which will not lead to the internal conflicts of the family members number number four it can also be part of the growth of the company once this person is the right person in the position to build a sustainable growth based on the uh, past experience that he had within the field of that uh, particular office. We always recommend that in family business, have a succession plan for the family members and have a succession plan also for the uh, people from outside the, uh, the organization, the family office. Why? Because on both, both of them, they are growing to grow your organization. Some of the uh, family offices that we have uh, uh, consulted long back, we found out that some of the family offices, they just want to bring their, their, their uh, siblings and their children and their next generations to, to a very, uh, to, sorry, to a ready, uh, positions within the organizations and the answer is this is our group of companies we own it we want the family to come in and just this is their right let me just say that yes it is their right but end of the day you want to generate fund for everyone to sustain a good living within the standard that was built from the beginning so if you bring them in and they are not ready, all what you're doing, you're just harming the future of the company because they will just sit, they will gonna be on the payroll, they will not add value. If you have the constitutions that they have a vote, end of the day, they are voting for something that they are not even familiarized with and the vote will gonna be an emotional vote ensure that some of the positions which is a growth positions as a business development as a ceo uh, the other associated departments and like marketings and all those things should be with by people from outside so the reporting line can be to the decision makers which is the board of uh, uh, directors which also in some of the cases should have also people from uh, outside the family and with that you have built it in a way that can sustain the growth of the current uh, family let's move on into family businesses succession plan checklist now if you're in the process of of building that succession plan ensure that you have the following uh, part of your checklist this is some of a lot of the things that should be on your checklist when it comes to the succession plan of the new generation entering your, uh, your organization as a family office. So set specific long-term goals for ownership. Ensure that you as an owner or leading or chairing the family office have also kept for yourself a plan a plan either for retirement, who is going to take over, in which year. Um, most of the family offices wait for the chair that something going to happen for somebody else to take over. Well, in other offices that we have also worked with, they have plans. 
The plant says when the chair reached to that part particular age, he have to go and enjoy his life. He have to go in retirement. And that person in the, on, the, on the plan is gonna take over. So ensure that the long term from like a, similar to the, to the strategic planning, you do it for three to, to five years, do the same thing, have a succession plan for the next three to five to 10 years, put your rules and regulations as per your in, internal book, uh, what is the year? Uh, is it by the elder? Is it by, 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 by if, it, if the family is into two family, uh, uh, we call the two families uh, share uh, in, the, in the business? Is it one, one term from this particular family? The other term is from the second family? And how does it work as per your, your, uh, your establishments, let's say, theory? that you have put it and agreed about it by everyone. With that, you are ensuring that nor you won't face a conflict that it's happening between you and the next generation coming up. If everything was agreed by everyone, communicate it right, because one of the key problems that the family offices is, is having is that communication is not up to the level that everyone will adopt the future before it comes to them. The second thing that I wish also to share with you is how to establish a, a set of uh, competencies. This is very important and not only in the competencies, also the clarity, the code of conduct, uh, the, the right way of making, make, of having the responsibility and taking those offers you will get to know all those things when you see the orientation is happening in the right way. When you see the training is happening in the, uh, the right way. When you see the, uh, the, the, what we call the incentive division or departments that the, the new generation will take off or start with, they are, uh, they, they are will really know, know how to function this, this place. One of the things that, uh, that, uh, that, that we found that it's missing in, in, in the family of a succession plan is not uh, when, the, when the offices is not measuring the impact of the success of them. And when they do the implementation and it fail, they just put solutions, but they don't measure the impact of that process. And this is one of the things that we advise family office to do is have a plan, do the implementation and have the succession plan, sorry, the measuring of the impact of the family offices. Another thing you need from time to time, yes, you do have um, a human capital performance report, uh, let's say quarterly, semi-annually and annually, but have also evaluation on the management's team. The evaluation on the management's team should also match the impact, which is which is which was um, let's say the impact result that is meant to happen. If you don't meet your expectation, measure the impact of the result and see where the failure happened, where the challenges is happening. And that's where you can draw a beautiful solution, a solution for a growth, a solution for a, a very smooth succession. Another thing, you don't, uh, from now, the family offices have also should identified who's the successing successors of the positions, not only as a family members, but also on the management's level, because you don't want to wait for that day that there will be a resignation from a key person and nobody can take over. Or you won't be, uh, in, in, and it did happen in a, in a family offices where the position is, but it was led by a family member, but end of the day, what happened is that that family member decided to stay, to go away from the protocol of the family and just start his own, uh, let's say, uh, establishments or company. Okay, 
the assessment and having a very aggressive, and I will keep on saying this, aggressive assessment, because assessment is the key when it goes to the board of directors, will give them the, the real uh, view of the, of the people who is activating the process, activating the plan, growing the strategy, implementing the business uh, in, uh, act, uh, activations plan or a business plan, in the right direction to ensure that the the, the market share is bigger and can uh, for the family office and also can sustain the growth of the upcoming generations in the future now also in family office succession plan you have to have also a very high caliber and also advanced uh, legal uh, advices, not only in this, not only in legal issues, but also nowadays, especially in our part in the Middle East, with the, the taxation have been uh, implemented. Why do we talk about this? That the succession plan is also have to move in a smooth way, in a legal way. So the legal arm is the key uh, departments which will also lay with the new generations to tell them what is the right thing and the wrong thing uh, that should uh, that they should understand now one of the things that's happening in family office that they disconnect the new generations from legal departments while they should also the, the new generation they should know what are the things that it's running in the legal part what are the things that is needed to be avoided? What are the things that needed uh, to, for, for the newcomers to go back to the legal department and speak to them about? So part of the induction when it comes to the new generations when they, before they take office is to be connected with that particular department, which is the legal departments. And then identify the successor. Why do we want the, the, the family office to identify the successors from now for the next year or the next two years or the next three years? Because that's where you will start putting the plan to train people. This is where you're gonna put the plan to grow them on their knowledge. This is where you're gonna put the plan to have them uh, ready if anything happened. What if that uh, person in the position decided to leave? Um, had a health issue, something happened to that person. At least you have planned who will going to be uh, in the succession uh, success, success ladder. And for that, you have prepared them to take office uh, uh, in the future. Okay. Um, this is very important also a point where you have to do whatever it takes to reduce uh, the number of people that is leaving your company. Why? Because that's going to reflect bad on the people uh, that is uh, uh, coming to your uh, to your organizations and you. Because the last thing that you want to have as a family office is that your turnover is very high, and that's also can be reduced when you give the the chance to the new uh, to your current employees your current family members to showcase their talent, to express what they want to say, when they want to plan something, give them the chance, not the full authority, but give them the chance to start what they want. Let them try. If it's, uh, and as an expert on the, uh, on the current generation, regardless of what your generation in is, with the, legal, with, the, with the advisory board, you can tell the newcomers how they can grow their ideas into a profitable one. So when they showcase their talent, they won't leave. They will think that this is the organizations that, are gonna, that is giving us the chance to grow. And, and this is where people started to listen to us. So the loyalty, and this is the key thing, when you build the loyalty internally, that's where you grow tremendously. So succession plan, I, I see it focus on three things, which is how the ownership goals and decisions works, 
how the families and decisions uh, works, especially when it comes to the goals, how the uh, uh, management in a way is, is leasing with those two particular stops. To maintain the family legacy, the new generations should be taught from the beginning about the family values and how the, the family have sustained the relationship internally and externally. So they have to know how to sustain family relationship. And I will emphasize in this, not only with family members, but also with the externals. Why? Because we just have to be very frank. Business is about your network. It's about your relationship. It's about how people trust you on your delivery, how they can trust you with your fund if you're in the investments part, okay? The other thing, understand that the growth of the legacy is based also on the share of the knowledge that you have. The legacy won't be there if you are holding to the things that you know and you're not willing to express the knowledge with the, with the current generations or the future generations. Plus, if you start to do so, it will reflect onto the harm, the beautiful relationship between you and all the people around you in the family. They will know that they can come back to you to ask you for knowledge. They want, they will, would love, love to speak to you more because they know that you are uh, aiming to grow them and make them successful in what they do, okay? Now, the, the legacy of the family is also related to the family wealth management. So the investment in the right place, the investments with a good return, the investments with the secure return, the investment with the capital that can also add to the growth and many other things and how to sustain a grow, uh, grow revenue in a high margin as example, and many other things related to your wealth management, okay? Uh, family enterprise successions, how you can, as, it, as we have been talking from the beginning, how you can start from now, putting the succession plan for your family office in a way that you have a rotation training and also a focused training within the office they will be taken off. Uh, ensure that you have a sufficient time frame for them to be evaluated by the concerned department or the advisory board. Uh, ensure that the family advisory board, which is outside the family office is also part of the, of, of the advisory that monitor the growth of the individuals who is coming to the uh, uh, company as a newcomers, okay? Now, how can you measure the impact or what is the effect that you started to measure the impact of your family business, um, let's say succession plan, okay? Now, if the impact is showing growth and a sustainable, uh, let's say, legacy, that will itself, okay, will be, uh, will, be, will, be a, will be a key thing for you to, to access to finance. Because you are very stable in the market as a family office, you have built the legacy and you have brought the generation in a very stable, uh, let's, let's say, level. Uh, you started to attract uh, and retain top talent because they see you that you are caring internally and also to the growth of those individuals and the key positions within your family office. Do not make the focus not uh, do not make the focus only on family members but also on to the other management staff talent because they're going to be a key people to help the family members also to come into the standard of becoming talents like them. They will gonna share things with them, but they won't do this until you also show them that you are uh, caring about the two parties and not only one. The aim is to build the legacy and also have the family. This is what you have to focus on and access to a new business business opportunity because as we have said, once the impact is an stable impact measured in a, in a way 
that shows that the uh, growth is a stable growth. That's where the uh, influence to the, to the external, uh, let's say, uh, clients uh, is there and the opportunity to access a new uh, business uh, opportunity will be very much uh, in need uh, uh, from your side. Uh, it will op open a lot of opportunity because you are a stable organization in the market. It will also foster the successful uh, growth of the management because they are adding value. I believe in one thing, if you know what you can get out of a of succession plan, you will never get out of succession plan. Um, thank you for, for, for listening to me today. And uh, um, if you have any question, uh, the moderator can take over for the questions and answers uh, session. That was really very nice of you, Mr. Khaled. Thank you so much. Uh, we had one question which just dropped in. How do you train young generation of family member for family business? So there is a question on the chat. Yeah. How to train young generation of family members for uh, family business. business. Um, the training have to start uh, really in a young age. The lack of confidence, the lack of the basic skills in leadership and communication and self-confidence, which then followed into the, uh, let's say the business oriented uh, courses, incentive ones, uh, prepare them in a way that they can enter for the success and the growth of the organization. A proper orientation, uh, I love the model, as I said in the, in the beginning, that the family members do not finish university and his training and then go to the, uh, what we call it, uh, goes to, to, uh, uh, to the family office directly, but they start working outside the family office to gain experience of, of how uh, business is all about. And then they come for a year for orientations and then goes into a very incentive training for the position that they will do internally. Okay, we have another question. What do you do in cases where majority proves to be difficult and choose not to follow standard procedures regularly? Now there is a question also, what do you do in case uh, where majority prove to be different uh, and choose not to follow uh, standard procedures uh, regularly? Now, this is also one of the things that most of the families is facing when the new enter entry to the family office as a family members he wish to do changes, he wants to act different um, uh, in a way that maybe it will lead to um, not to follow the rules and regulations and the procedures that was built by the family office. That's where the two advisory boards comes in. The internal uh, advisory board to the family office, and then we have the family office advisory. Usually the family office advisory is the most senior members of the family. That's where they interfere because that this person might also harm the process of the direct uh, growth of the uh, family office. So the answer is this person have to be directed to the advisory uh, board. <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah, thank you for your answer. Yep. Yeah. Any more questions?
Any other question? Yes, we have one more question which dropped in. Now, uh, external advisors for family office is also recommended to be with the with the, the family advisors of the family offices because you you need to have different opinions, different different board, uh, maybe an advisors on the finance, an advisors on um, philanthropy, an advice on the uh, strategic thinking. Uh, so those who have played a really good role in the growth of businesses, they can be also part of your uh, advisory board. It's not necessary that there are hundreds of persons from the same uh, family, because that's an advisory. But the family advisory board, which is not for the family office, should be from the family because you need it you need to have a close uh, information about the issues of the family all right in the absence of uh, yes we have one question from rahul As an expert in case of conflict, who would you advise is the best to solve this amicable amongst all parties involved? Uh, now, this is what we have just said earlier. If it's things, well, it depends on the level of the conflicts. If it's a family conflict, it goes into the advisory and the board of directors to solve it because the member is a family member. If it's in the management's part, it depends on the level. There are some levels that need a higher involvement, and there is also the normal levels, we call it the operational levels, which goes into the normal channels in any organization, which is the HR. If it's only a family member who had the conflict, it can be also directed outside the family office to the advisory board of the family. I hope that that uh, uh, was uh, just a, a good answer for you, Rahul. All right. Um, so we still have this last question. I, are there some examples of best managed family business in UAE or MENA? It's a very good question. There is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I wish I can pronounce the names, but I have worked with a lots of family offices. And I have to tell you that there is a beautiful models of family businesses. One of the family businesses today that I'm really, really proud of, yes, they have a beautiful, solid family business uh, internal uh, process and constitution. Today, they are 133 years old in business. Oh. The second one is also a legacy in what they do. And they have, yes, a beautiful internal constitution for their family. And they are 90 plus years on, on the service. And they even have a big factory in, in, um, in China operated by them. Um, and many others. So the, to answer you in short, yes, there is. There is a lots of successful family businesses in the, in the Gulf. Okay. And uh, I'm very proud of one of the family businesses also in, uh, in Mina, who is now 70 plus years also in service. 
here. So the 133 years old, uh, to, make, uh, to make it more clear, they also have a division in UAE and they have in Saudi and they have also in uh, Bahrain. So yes, to answer you, yes. There is a wonderful ex uh, examples of successful family businesses in MENA and in the Gulf. Yes, uh, so answer to, to your question, Thomas. Yes, we will be having this uh, video recorded and uh, it will be uploaded on YouTube. So for those who haven't seen it or else if you want to see it again, uh, then you can basically just go to YouTube and see the recording. Great. Um, at this stage, I would like to thank Mina for inviting me, Mina speakers, for inviting me to speak to your audience. It's great pleasure. And um, thank you for being the leading platform for the speakers on the Middle East and for all your efforts in, uh, in showcasing the speakers. Uh, we love what you do. You're, you're, you're leading the, uh, a very important sector and we wish you more success in everything that you do. Thank you very much for the invitations and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. It's an honor it's an, and a pleasure for us to have you with us over here uh, and sharing with the audience your expertise and your experience. So yes, if anybody wants to ha have, have any other questions and you want to get directed to Mr. Khalid, you can just drop it to us at info at mina-speakers.com. We will be happy to answer it. And please do don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining us on this session. Have a Thank good you. evening. Yeah.